Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 6, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, DDE took a look at one of the James Webb telescope images that I mentioned last week. DDE used his JPEG dump Python script uh, to help analyze them. It identified three different JPEG data structures in files that embedded malware in addition to the image. Now, remember, uh, when I talked about this, uh, this is not a case where the image will execute code as you view it. So uh, the image itself is not really the exploit here. It's really just used as a carrier uh, to obfuscate, if you want to call it this way, or to bypass some other detection techniques. And the malicious code is then being extracted by malware that the system is already infected with. The JPEG dump script does allow extracting this additional data. It's formatted as a certificate. Again, it isn't a certificate. The certificate is here just used as a innocuous container for Base64 encoded data that's then being decoded into the PE executable. And Microsoft's Defender Antivirus apparently had some false positive issues over the weekend. The Register and others summarized complaints from users who observed Microsoft Defender flagging various applications built around the Chromium browser engine or the Electron JavaScript framework as malicious. Both of these technologies uh, are used similarly in the sense that they do allow you to build sort of these native applications that really are built around web applications. So it makes a web application kind of look like a native application. And if you remember last week, I talked about like a malicious translate application that sort of uh, used the uh, Chromium engine, uh, for example. And maybe issues like this is why Microsoft Defender uh, flagged it. Electron, of course, is very popular. It allows you to use JavaScript. HTML and such to build native applications. Slack, I believe, and uh, Spotify are some sort of famous and widely used applications. And apparently Spotify at least was affected by these false positives. Affected applications were flagged as Hive ransomware, which is a big ransomware strain uh, these days. So certainly something uh, to be uh, aware of and uh, to be uh, afraid of if you are seeing this alert. Microsoft did publish several signature updates on Sunday. It appears the problem is fixed now. For those who did the right thing and took the weekend off and didn't touch a computer, well, you probably never noticed anything happening. And talking about Google Chrome, we got an update for Chrome on Friday that fixes, surprise or not surprised, another already exploited vulnerability. That's the only vulnerability flagged and fixed in this update. The flaw CVE 2022-3075 was reported to Google about a week ago. I always recommend uh, at least once a day to restart uh, Google Chrome. That sort of usually applies whatever updates they are pending. And well, uh, since at least in the US, it's uh, coming work back to work from a long weekend, maybe just the best to reboot your uh, system to make sure everything is up to date and applied correctly. And SharkBot malware has returned to the Google Play Store, according to a blog post by Fox IT. The malware uh, was found in two applications, again, in the Google Play Store, one being Mr. Phone Cleaner. I see a lot of at least shady applications, not necessarily outright malicious, that sort of claim to clean your system, uh, clean your phone. And the other one uh, was uh, Kilhavi Mobile Security. Uh, Together, they had about 60,000 installations, according to the Google Play Store. The uh, software has now been removed from the Google Play Store. But, uh, of course, uh, people who had installed, so those 60,000, they still remain affected. It's an info stealer, so it's using permissions to intercept keystrokes and SMS messages, and then sends them off to a command and control server. 
And congratulations to Gordon Fjodor uh, Leon for releasing NMAP 793, the 25th anniversary release. NMAP has certainly accompanied me during a MyInfosec journey, so almost as uh, long as uh, NMAP is old. Still being updated regularly, still hasn't lost any of its relevance for InfoSec security and still uh, very, very widely used. So um, shout out to Fyodor here for uh, releasing and sticking with this tool for all these 25 years. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.